for some sunshine, amen? Well, I tell you, we've been spoiled this winter, and uh, um, I'm not going to complain. You're never going to hear a complaint down in my mouth. So, um, you know, it's supposed to be 53? Wow. And uh, uh, it's, uh, I was talking to another pastor friend who's further north, and I was telling him, I'm like, you know, we don't have any snow on the ground hardly at all. I said, just, you know, wherever piles we're at, that's what's melting away, and and uh, so we've been having temperatures in the 40s and 50s, and he's like, that's ungodly. <laughs> but I told him, I said, well, I said, it is what it is, amen. They still got snow on the ground, but it's starting to melt, so uh, uh, where they're at, so uh, praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter number five, hopefully you found it by now. We'll read verse four and five real quick like here. Uh, we'll review, and then we'll get right into the lesson here. We'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the lesson here this morning. Ecclesiastes chapter number five, verse number four says, When thou vowest a vow unto God, uh, defer not to pay, uh, pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow than uh, that thou shouldest vow and not pay. We've been talking about some New Year's resolutions. People uh, say, hey, I'm going to uh, resolve to uh, read my Bible or I'm going to resolve to... Uh, uh, you know, kick this hat or, you know, start this project, whatever it is. And uh, what it's saying there, it's better to uh, say, hey, uh, I'm just going to do my best rather than say, hey, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read my Bible every single day. And uh, uh, that's what, you know, we're talking about trying to uh, commit to do the, doing these things, just not uh, vowing to God that you're going to do those and then uh, not follow through. But uh, I want to encourage you to read your Bible. You know, I've, I've, so now we're, uh, this is February 4th, is that right? February 4th. So we're uh, now starting the second month of the year. How many have been reading their Bible each day? Amen. All right, keep it up. If you missed some days or missed a week or missed half the month, get back into it, all right? Don't, don't give up. Just don't, don't say, well, that's it. Uh, we're into February. There's no way I can finish it. If you start right now, you could finish it uh, still. Uh, even if you didn't even start uh, reading your Bible, you can finish reading your Bible uh, by the end of the year if, if you want to take that challenge or just reading your Bible. Just take time every single day. Make it a priority. You know, you have time for what you want to do. Amen. Every single person has time for what they want to do. And uh, I want to encourage you to take time uh, to read your Bible. Then uh, uh, we talked about how uh, we ought to be uh, challenged to pray more and uh, of course, we looked at uh, Matthew 17 and then also Luke chapter number 18. And uh, you and I need to be willing to say, Lord, help me to pray. You know, uh, we've been praying for our church to grow spiritually, numerically, and financially. Had somebody one time, they said, well, Pastor, I don't, I don't see, uh, you know, these results. You know, you, we're praying for this. And, and uh, sometimes you may not see it directly. You know, you ever, you ever had uh, where you're uh, trying to do something and you don't see the progress you're making? And then somebody comes along, and they've seen where well, the project was, and then all of a sudden where it is now, and they're like, wow, what a drastic change. Amen? That's what sometimes is going on in our life. You know, God is slowly making changes in our life. We're making those changes, and we just think, well, I'm not making any progress here, uh, but God is uh, working in our hearts and lives. We just need to pray, Lord, help me to grow spiritually. Help me to, uh, you know, uh, help the church to grow uh, numerically and help the church to grow financially and help me as, a, as an individual to have a closer walk with the Lord or, or uh, maybe pray for more specific things. You know, maybe you can pray, say, Lord, would you help me... Uh, as I uh, uh, witness, Lord, give me give me opportunity, uh, Lord, uh, give me the right words to say when when uh, you know I talk to somebody. You know, you don't want to talk to somebody uh, about the Lord if uh, uh, if they're asking you, you know, hey, uh, you know, if you're working at a mechanic shop, for instance, and and uh, they're saying, hey, you know, uh, uh, you know, do you want your oil changed or or whatever, and and uh, you're like, well, let me talk to you about the Lord. Look. Their, their concentration right now is on changing your oil, uh, but maybe you can ask a question that might elicit you know, them uh, thinking about spiritual things. Um, hey, yeah, I need the oil changed. You know, sometimes we need uh, uh, the Lord to change our lives and, and, uh, you know, uh, and then talk about spiritual things. You know? uh, just ask the Lord for wisdom about that. We ended with, uh, oh, and then we talked about uh, uh, not only that, but then we talked about witnessing to people. You know, uh, being a witness, you know, don't, don't turn people off. Amen. Uh, I think uh, uh, there are too many Christians that have, you know, and I, again, 
It's being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, all right? Um, you know, if, if somebody isn't open to the gospel right there, don't, don't try and shove it down their throat. Uh, be patient, you know? Sometimes the Holy Spirit is just saying, wait, just, just wait, you know? Uh, sometimes we get ahead of, ahead of God and, and uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we're like, come on, come on, you need to pray right now. Well, hold on, maybe, maybe this isn't the right time, amen? Uh, I was talking with uh, Brother Terry Rushing, uh, he mentioned this uh, to me. We, I saw him this last uh, week here. I think it was on Friday. And uh, he said, you know, Brother Hallett, he said, I use you as an example for a lot of different things. He said, I hope you don't mind. I said, no, that's fine. He said, one of the things that he said, uh, uh, sometimes he, he said, I was talking with a couple of young people that uh, they were in, getting impatient about, uh, you know, getting married. And uh, he said, you know, I told them about you and Mrs. Naomi, how the Lord had to work in your heart and life before God brought you guys together. And uh, he said, you know, sometimes it's the right person and the uh, right individual, but just the wrong timing. And, uh, you know, same with uh, witnessing to somebody. It may be that right person, but you may be, all you may be doing is just planting the seed. You may be just coming along and watering it. It may not be your responsibility to, uh, to harvest. Now, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit leads you that direction, fine. But don't sit there and say, Come on, you got to pray right now. Uh, be patient, you know. Uh, uh, sometimes we, uh, we try to get ahead of the Lord, and we got we to gotta be patient there. Um, but uh, we're to be witnesses uh, simultaneously in our Jerusalem, our Judea, our Samaria, and our uttermost. We talked about that. And we ended with uh, page number three. Uh, we ended with uh, letter D at the very top there. We're going to pick up there Roman numeral four, and uh, uh, we'll uh, finish that lesson. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 You know, uh, uh, Mrs. Slama has kind of a similar testimony. She, uh, her parents, when she got saved, her parents just kind of, you know, uh, didn't like it, didn't want to talk to her, and uh, uh, she was patient. To her, our knowledge, I don't think her mom got saved, but we're pretty sure uh, we're, we're certain her dad is you know is up in heaven now um i even even the just in talking with him um i from the time i first met him and had a conversation with him probably about i don't know six months a year maybe after i met first met him and then having a conversation with him just you know maybe uh, six months before he passed away um yeah, what a difference. Uh, there was a huge difference. And, and sometimes, too, I've learned this. Sometimes people don't know that terminology. You know, they may have the uh, terminology from the religion that they may have been in because that's all they know. You know, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't sit there and say, well, they didn't use the right term, so they're not saved. Um, I had one time an individual said, well, they didn't say that they prayed and invited Christ in their heart. And I'm like, hold on. I said, if you listen to what they were saying, I do believe they were saved. Here's what they said. And the person just didn't realize that they used a different terminology, and that's it. That's uh, sometimes what happens. And, and uh, sometimes you just have to be patient. Sometimes it is 10, 20, 20 you know, 30 years. Um, you know, I shared with you about that one lady uh, that got saved after uh, her family had been praying. I think it was like 45 years uh, that her family had been praying for her. She finally got saved, and, you know, and she's in her 90s, you know. Um, and uh, so it does happen, and you just got to be patient. Yeah, I, I, I've used that as well. I've used that illustration. I'm like, um, yeah, you know, the thief on the cross didn't bow his head and uh, didn't get on his knees, you know, wasn't, uh, you know, crying while he's up there. And I had, a, had an individual one time. They said, well, if they didn't cry enough, then uh, they probably weren't saved. I'm like, where in the world do you get this? I'm like, there's nowhere in the Bible that you got this. And, and what it is, is, is their mindset of repentance was different. They thought it meant, you know, being remorseful and crying about their, their sin. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There is no, no place in the Bible. But I've taken them to that uh, place on the thief on the cross. You know, 
hey, remember me today in paradise, you know? And the Lord says, hey, today thou shalt be with me in paradise, you know? Uh, and that was it. That was his point of salvation, you know? And, you know? and I've heard people say, well, he didn't pray the prayer, so he wasn't probably really there. I'm like, you're a moron if you really believe that because uh, look at what the scripture says. Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And I, I know we'll see the thief on the cross uh, when we get up there to heaven, amen? The one thief, not the other thief, amen? The one thief that did uh, get saved, amen? I want to make that clear. I believe that Jesus is the son. Yep, that was his point of salvation. You know, and I, I think sometimes, you know, people are like, well, they have to pray a certain prayer. If you say these mystical magic words in this order, then you get saved. It's like, wait, no, there's nothing in the Bible about that. And it is putting their faith and trust only in Jesus and his finished work, amen? There ought to be a time that you can point back to and say, hey, this is that moment of salvation, but there's no mystical words. yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, but yes, it is important to witness. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit when you witness to somebody. We're going to uh, uh, have a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the lesson here this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for... Uh, the time that we've already had, uh, Lord, looking at your word, looking at this lesson, and Lord, even the discussion we've just already had. But Lord, I pray that you just guide and direct our thoughts, our words, and Lord, help us to uh, glean uh, from your word and from uh, this lesson, those things that are needful in our heart and our life. Lord, that we'd be willing to accept uh, these challenges here, Lord. Pray now that you'll uh, bless our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, next uh, point there, uh, page number three, Roman number four. Uh, not only should we read our Bible and pray and witness uh, to others, but we also need to disciple uh, someone. You know, winning souls to Christ is is important, and it is fun. Amen. I I, I got to tell you, uh, it just uh, thrills my heart. Every single time I've led somebody to the Lord, there's never been a time I'm like. Boy, I wasted my time with that guy or that woman, you know. Even just witnessing to somebody, I don't, I don't look at it as a waste of time. The only time I've ever felt I wasted my time was with Christians that want to argue about things. That's the only time I, I felt I've wasted my time. And it's like, uh, there was one couple, I remember uh, they uh, uh, talked with my wife and I. I want to say it was like five or six hours. We had a crying baby. It was when Timothy was uh, just a baby. I had just become pastor, so he would have been maybe a year and a half old or so, uh, close, just shy of two years old. And uh, we sat down, and like I said, it was like five or six hours. Um, and we got done, and my wife and I looked at each other. We're like, what a waste of time. You know, and we both realized, we were like, okay, there were some other people we were going to talk to, and Satan used these, this couple. I'm not saying, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. I don't think that people are a waste of time, all right? I just uh, believe it was spending time with that individual, those individuals, they were not uh, wanting to sit down to talk to learn. They were sitting down to talk to argue. They wanted me to uh, you know, come around to their point of view and say, oh, you're right, I'm wrong. That's what they wanted. And there was never going to be a time. I even told them, I said, nothing you tell me is going to convince me Otherwise, uh, they were arguing about, uh, uh, they thought we were actually in the tribulation period. Now, that I've been pastoring coming up on, uh, it'll be 18 years this April. It's hard to believe. The first Sunday in April will be 18 years. Uh, and they're sitting there arguing. They're telling me we're in the tribulation period right now. That's what they were telling me 18 years ago. Now, if you know your Bible... The Bible tells us uh, that uh, the tribulation period will be a seven-year period. So guess what? There are 11 years past, amen? Uh, we, we should be in the millennial reign, 11 years into the millennial reign of Christ, according to them, 
you know, or whatever time frame, I don't know what, what year they thought we were in, but they were convinced that we were in the tribulation period. And uh, they were like, you're an error. Your dad was an error. And I'm like, show me from the Bible. And I said, I'll show you from the Bible uh, that uh, we're not in the tribulation period. Here's why. Uh, but uh, anyways, there are some people that uh, they just want to argue for argument's sake. But winning souls is important. Uh, and I enjoy spending time with young Christians. Amen. I really do. But something that is just as vital as witnessing uh, is to disciple somebody. Teaching them, taking them, you know, there's a reason why we have Sunday school. I, I, think, uh, I think sometimes people think Sunday school and they immediately think of little kids. Isn't that true? You know, uh, there was a time in my life, I, even in the ministry here, I, I thought about renaming uh, shortly after I became uh, uh, the pastor. I thought about renaming it. And I was like, no. Uh, we don't have to rename something just to, uh, you know, get people to see it. You know, it's just helping understand, helping people to understand why it's vital, why it's important, amen? Why, why Sunday school is important. It's not just, you know, we're not here just to fill up a time to be able to say, all right, we had Sunday school, amen? The goal is to teach others. You know, there's a reason why we have a, a discipleship class. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You know, we, we want to teach others to do, you know, so if, if we don't teach others why we do what we do, the church will never be perpetuated. Amen. If we just uh, win them and then that's it. All right, uh, toss them aside. Let's go to the next one. Toss them aside once they, no, no, no. Uh, then the church will end up failing. If, if we take the time and come alongside of, you know, a brother Christopher or a brother, uh, brother Chop or a brother Jensen or a brother, uh, brother uh, uh, Peterson, come alongside of them and saying, hey, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Hey, hey let me teach you uh, some things. Here, and we'll see some things here. Uh, look at Matthew chapter number uh, 28. Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number 28. <clears throat> I want you to notice with me there, verse number 19 and 20. Of course, this is Jesus speaking, verse number 18. Jesus uh, came and spake unto them, talking about the disciples, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. But notice what he says there. Go ye therefore and what? Teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What's the next word? Very, ne very next verse, verse 20. What's the first word there? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know, it's taking the time to come along and say, hey, this is why we do what we do. Amen. Uh, you know, teaching them about uh, baptism. Hey, this is what baptism is once they get saved. Hey, this is why it's important to get baptized, amen? Today, Lord willing, we'll have a baptism, amen? Why? I took the time, realized, hey, I need to teach this person why uh, baptism is important, amen? It's a, by the way, it is a step of obedience. Uh, a lot of Christians, I've seen, there was a Christian that uh, they just struggled for, with it for years. They had been saved uh, many years before and they struggled with it and then finally got to the point where they finally saw it and it was like that light bulb went on. They were like, oh, Oh, it's just obedience. It's not anything else. Amen. Uh, they were thinking I had a whole bunch of other connotations and it didn't. I'm like, whatever you got in your head, get it out of your head. Amen. And uh, it just, it took time. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Right. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, the, uh, many times the why, amen? I, I took uh, many times, uh, years ago, so I had just become pastor. I think I'd been pastoring maybe maybe three, four months, maybe maybe close to six months. Um, and I had somebody come to me, and they're like, Pastor, why do we use the King James Bible? My dad's pat answer was, well, I'm the pastor, and I said so. People are like, oh, okay, all right. And he got away. He's white-haired, you know, he looked old, cranky sometimes. He wasn't cranky, but he may have looked cranky or seemed cranky to somebody or something. And, and he was always just, uh, you know, jovial kind of guy. And, and, uh, but he, uh, uh, you know, when, when somebody asked him, why, 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 do we, you know, why do we use the King James Bible? Well, I'm the pastor, and I said so. Oh, okay. And, uh, well, why, do we, why don't we have drums up on the platform? Well, I'm the pastor, I said so. So when people came to me and they're like, Pastor, why do, why do we use the King James Bible? And I'm like, I can't use that excuse. I just, I've been a pastor for six months. I'm like, there's no way in God's green earth I'm going to be able to say, well, I'm the pastor and I said so. Yeah, they'd be like, well, that's a prideful statement. And uh, no, we're not going to follow that. So I thought, okay, I need to teach why we use the King James Bible. Uh, we took the time. Uh, I took about uh, six weeks. Uh, Brother Chop does this now in the uh, uh, New Life class. Uh, takes the time to teach why we're using the King James Bible. There are differences. Things that are different are not the same, amen? Uh, and uh, I had a person one time, they're like, well, you know, the New King James is really good. And uh, then I showed uh, this individual some changes, and I said, this changes doctrine right here. If it takes this out, takes out the blood of Christ, that changes doctrine. You take away the deity of Christ, it changes doctrine. They're like, I never saw that. I'm like, just look at it. Just read it, amen? It's there. I'm, it's not something I'm making up, amen? But that's why you have to take the time to teach somebody. You know, uh, we teach, uh, uh, you know, I taught on music. Uh, this has been quite a few years ago. I'm, I might have to get that lesson out again. Teach on music. Why, you know, what, what music is appropriate? What music uh, we should listen to? I had one time a person said, well, pastor, you never mentioned exactly every genre of music. And I said, you know the problem is? I said, I could have mentioned, I, I said, there are so multi, there's multiple genres of music out there. It'd make your head spin, all right? There's Christian. There's Christian rap. There's Christian rock. Now, no, all these things are oxymorons. They, they, they don't uh, go together, all right? Uh, there's Christian country. There's Christian uh, uh, jazz. There's, and you can, now you can take country music. There's country rock. There's country jazz. I mean, you just go through the whole thing. And I had the individual there. Well, you didn't mention even one genre of music. And I'm like, yeah, if I would have mentioned, you know, a hundred of them and missed one, that one individual would sit there and say, well, pastor didn't mention my genre of music. So my genre of music must be okay because he didn't mention it. And the individual still didn't get it. But you and I have to realize, hey, there's a reason why we need to teach why godly music is right. How it affects us. You know, I had uh, in Bible college, uh, my second year of Bible college, uh, the, the second college I went to, uh, the professor got up and he said, you know what, I'm going to prove to you that music does not affect you by the end of this, uh, um, uh, by the end of this semester. And I said, sir, um, you know, can I... Can I prove to you that music does affect you? And he, at first he told me later, he said, I thought you were just being arrogant. And he said, but you proved me wrong. And, and he said, you know, I, I stand corrected. By the end of the uh, semester, he said, you know, I stand corrected. Music does control you. And it, music is not amoral. It does influence you. It, it, it uh, uh, influences how you think. It influences your philosophy. It influences everything. Um, that's why we need to teach, though, others, you know, hey, this is why we're doing 
uh, what we're doing. You know, we're given the great commission here in Matthew chapter number 28 and uh, verses 19 and 20 of going, witnessing, baptizing, but then discipling, taking the time to teach them. Hey, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Hey, this is, uh, uh, you know, why the scriptures, you know, uh, if, if you haven't uh, figured out right now in the last uh, probably six months, I've been emphasizing, hey, getting into the Bible, reading your Bible. You know why? Because I know there's gonna, may come a time when they may say, hey, you no longer can read your Bible. You say, oh, we live in America. That's not going to happen. Yeah, if you would have told me uh, 10 years ago, you know, every single church in, this, uh, in the world is going to try to shut down or the government's going to try to shut every uh, church down in America, I would have laughed in your face. I would have told you, no, take a hike, that ain't going to happen. And then four years ago, we saw some things happen. Amen. Uh, Canada, they're still dealing with it. You say, what? We're four years past it. They're still dealing with it up in Canada, the ramifications of it. There were so many uh, uh, freedoms that they gave up and all for the sake of safety. And, and uh, you and I need to realize, hey, we have to get into the word of God, saturate our heart and our mind with the word of God. You know, uh, uh, preaching online is great, amen? But we ought to saturate our heart and mind more with the word of God than we do the preaching, Amen. Look in Acts chapter number 18. Acts chapter number 18. You know, uh, how, many, uh, how many remember learning how to drive? Amen? Did anybody uh, have a class where, uh, you know, you had a simulator? Anybody have that kind of class? I know I had a simulator. Uh, that's, that's how I learned it. And uh, uh, Timothy, I know he had online classes, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Online classes. He had to watch videos of the uh, classes. And, and uh, you know, then, uh, uh, you know, Timothy, right after he watched the classes, he was able to drive right away, right? No. There were still some things he had to learn. Even though I was in a simulator, amen, even though I thought I knew how to drive, uh, I, this, this stays in this room. Well, it's probably online now. Who cares? Uh, when I was 13 years old, uh, my, my sister didn't know how to drive a stick shift. And uh, we, my parents had gone on a trip and uh, left us the, uh, it was a Datsun 210. And uh, we had church at the time on Wednesday nights over at the staff house because we didn't have this building at the time. And uh, so uh, uh, my sister uh, gets in the car and uh, she go, okay, we're going to go to church. And, and uh, we were planning on being there about a half hour early because uh, we had to uh, make sure it was all set up and all that. So we get in the car, and uh, she's starting to back up. And she just couldn't get it back, even to back it up out of the driveway. We, couldn't, I, we didn't even make it halfway out of the driveway. Finally, she looks at me, and she goes, Tim, do you know how to drive this? Now, mind you, I'm 13. She's 16. She has a driver's license. I didn't have my driver's license. I'm like, yeah. She goes, can you drive us to uh, the staff house? Or, uh, we didn't call it the staff house. I don't remember what we called it at that time, but drive us to church. And uh, um, can we take the back way, though? I'm like, sure. And I said, but we can't tell mom or dad. And she goes, nope, nope, we won't tell mom or dad. I said, okay. So... Yeah, we got the recording. My, my mom will whoop the fire to me now. No, she probably won't. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um, I got in the car, started up. You know why? I took the time, my, my dad took the time that winter before, so this is, I don't remember when it was, sometime in the spring or summer or something like that, but that winter before, so we used to, uh, Lake Altoona, and I don't know if they still do this, but they used to have races out on the ice. So they'd plow this uh, big old track, and, and uh, uh, then they'd have these ice races. Man, you'd hear these cars, you know, going around that track. And uh, what they would do is after the races were done, they'd leave the track, and then anybody could drive out there and go on the track. So my dad takes me out there, and he goes, okay, son, I want you to learn how to drive this. So this is the winter before. So I thought, oh, okay. And so uh, I get it in first gear, you know, and, you know, it's very forgiving because you're on ice. And uh, finally get it going, got into second gear. I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. 
And then my dad grabs the wheel. Get out of the turn real quick, like. Get out of the spin. I'm like, whoa, whoa. And first time, I hit a snowbank. And he goes, all right, did you learn anything? I'm like, well, I learned that you're going to grab the wheel sometimes. I remember saying that to him. He said, let me teach you how to get out of that again. So then he took me again. He grabbed the wheel again. He said, now get out of this spin. And he taught me how to get out of that spin. Now, here I was out on the ice. I, was, uh, I would have been about 12 years old at that time. Yeah, because, uh, no, it might have been th- I might have been 13. And then it might, I think it was in the springtime because it was before my 14th birthday. I was 13. So it would have been in the springtime sometime, probably like May or June or something like that, just before my birthday. But anyway, so, um, you know, he taught me, he took me around that track multiple times. And it was him teaching me how to drive, teaching me how to drive a stick shift, teaching me how to get out of a, uh, you know, when you're uh, starting to spin out, how to get out of that, amen? It it, it, It took him investing some time into me to be able to understand, hey, this is how you do this, this is how you shift, uh, all those things. So when my sister said, hey, Tim, can you drive us? Guess what? We didn't, it didn't even stall once. We just backed out. We uh, pulled down. We went down uh, uh, Peterson Avenue down to North Shore Drive, got on North Shore Drive, came right out here uh, over by the Quick Trip now and uh, uh, turned uh, right onto Gala Street and uh, got to the house there. And we had Wednesday night church service. And my sister said this, we're going to wait until everybody's gone and then you'll drive us back home. I'm like, okay. And guess what? So that's what I did. And we stopped at Quick Trip, got some, uh, uh, some milk because we needed milk and uh, drove the rest of the way home. And every, no one was the wiser, except for you now. <laughs> but I said all that to say this, that my dad took time to teach me how to drive. I didn't all of a sudden just wake up one day and say, okay, I can drive. You know, uh, you didn't wake up one day and have all the knowledge of the things that you have. Somebody took time to teach you, or you taught, you know, took time. Uh, there were some things like decks. You know, I, I had built one deck before I started my business. Helped my dad on a couple other decks, but one, uh, one for sure deck, I helped uh, build that one. And then somebody said, hey, can you build me a deck? I got a book that said how to build decks, <laughs> you know, And I read it. Somebody took the time to type all that up and it taught me to be able to say, oh, okay, this is how you build a deck. And so that's what I did. And you and I need to realize, hey, God is trying to teach us some things and we need to be willing to come alongside of somebody. Why? They're not going to have the knowledge. Look at Acts chapter number, we got to close real quick like here. We're going to go through this real fast. uh, Acts chapter number 18, verse number 23 and following. It says, and after he had spent some time uh, there, he departed, went over all the country of Galatia. This is talking about uh, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Galatia and Fergie, in order, uh, strengthening all the disciples. So he's teaching them. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man uh, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So he's like, hey, this is what I know. This is why I'm teaching what I'm teaching. This is why I'm preaching what I'm preaching. Amen? Verse 26, though. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God, notice those last two words, what? More perfectly. Hey, this is why people ought to be baptized, amen? Hey, this is why we do what we do. You know, the, you know it's uh, taking that time to disciple somebody, amen? Amen? We're given this perfect example here. Paul is discipling others. Then we see Aquila and Priscilla follow that same example. There in uh, verse 23 is when Paul, he's strengthening all the disciples. Uh, It doesn't doesn't say it, but if you look at that word, uh, that word uh, strengthening there uh, in uh, the Greek deals with really teaching. That's what it is. Uh, It's teaching them and and showing them and, you know, it's really strengthening them, encouraging them, challenging them, all those different things. It's all, all, all encompassed there. 
a great passage of scripture for discipling someone is the book of Titus. Boy, I tell you, the book of Titus is really easy to, to disciple somebody using that, uh, that particular passage. And uh, you and I need to be willing to say, Lord, we need to teach others why we do what we do. Yes, sir. Amen. It is. It is. And being patient. Again, allowing the Holy Spirit to work on somebody. They're not going to change overnight, but allowing the Holy Spirit to work in their heart. You know, I want to encourage you to make some, cha- make some resolutions, some commitments to do some things for the Lord in this new year. Uh, make some sacrifices. You know, be willing to say, hey, uh, Lord, uh, would you use me in, in a way that would glorify you? Lord, I, I want to resolve to do more for you this year. And, uh, uh, and uh, this may be the year, by the way, that Christ returns. We need to be willing to say, Lord, help me to do all I can uh, for you while, I, while I'm able to do that. Amen. And uh, so I, I hope you'll accept that challenge. I know we kind of went through that last uh, last little bit uh, there kind of quick, but uh, take time to teach somebody, amen, to disciple somebody. Amen. 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 Yeah, we, I'd like to see our uh, new life class restarted again. And we've got a number of uh, folks that need uh, need to learn some things, amen. Uh, that's what the purpose of that class is for. And what's that? Amen, amen, amen. But uh, uh, we'll, Lord, we'll start it again soon. But anyways, we've got to be dismissed because of uh, time here. And uh, we'll have somebody... Uh, uh, um, next week be teaching the class. All right, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for each one. Lord, I do pray that you'd help us to accept the challenge of uh, reading the scriptures, Lord, committing it to heart and, and all that, Lord, and praying more, and Lord, just uh, how, how important it is to pray. Lord, it's you moving, uh, us moving your hand, really, is what it is, and trusting you, Lord, I, I pray that you'd help us to do that, and then help us to witness to more people. Boy, I tell you, there are people, there's no lack of people in this world, Lord, o- over 8 billion people in this world, and, and uh, we need to do our best to try to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and Lord, I pray that you'd help us to do that. But then, Lord, help us to also disciple others, teaching them uh, to uh, why we do what we do and, and to observe things and, and obey and, and uh, follow. And Lord, I just pray that you'd help us to uh, uh, be able to convey that thought, that, that teaching uh, to others as well. Lord, bless now the preaching service this morning. Lord, I pray you be honored and glorified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you have a few minutes before.